In this video, we're going to learn to use the Form Flatten tool. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to get into a form tool called Flatten, and we're going to look at the three different ways that we can use it. To get started in Fusion 360, we're going to create a new form, and normally we create a plane or we start with a face. But in this case, I'm actually going to go a little bit different, and I'm going to start with a quad ball. Pick any plane you want, and then just simply draw a sphere at the center, and say OK. We want to make sure that edges are visible, and I'm going to go into box display mode. It's a little bit easier for me to select faces. I'm going to grab the four bottom faces and simply hit delete on the keyboard. Double click the open edges, then go to modify edit form and scale them out. If you want to look at this at smooth display, it's not really going to matter, but what we've created is a mushroom shape. From the side, the next thing that we want to do is we want to adjust the shape and I'm going to just simply move it around a little bit and I'm going to scale it a little bit so that these edges are not flat. So what we want to do is we want to look at the flatten tool and exactly what that means for us. So let's go ahead and go into modify and we want to select flatten. Now there are three different ways that we can use flatten. The direction can either be fit, selected plane, or select a parallel plane. The first method of fit is going to take an average of vertices. So if we look at this from close to a side view and we begin selecting, we've got this really low point here and this really low point here. As soon as we get to four vertices, it's going to start averaging out their positions. So you can see here that as soon as we select all of them, it's begun averaging out their positions, and what we have is a completely flat bottom set of vertices. We're going to deselect those, and we're going to move on to the next option, which is selected plane. Now if we take a look at our origins, or if we just simply rotate this around, the plane is extremely high up above where the sphere is. If we select that and we go ahead and we select T-spline vertices, it's going to move those up to that plane. Now this could work in our favor if we have a specific plane that we're using as a reference height, but in this instance it actually isn't going to work for us very well. So we're going to do parallel to a selected plane. Now when we do this, same thing, we need to select a plane, and this time we need to select the control vertices, this time we don't need to have four or five vertices selected. As soon as we have two, it'll begin moving their position until they are parallel to the selected plane. The end result is still going to be a flat face, but this gives us the option to have a plane at an angle or a specific reference that can be a little bit more specific or in a different location than just averaging their heights. Now at this point, we've taken a look at the control points, but this can also be done with surface points and there is a slight difference. When we look at this in box display mode, these are the control points that we're using. When we look at it in smooth display mode, these are the surface points. Now in this specific example, it's not a drastic difference, but you will note that the shape does change slightly based on which vertices we're using. Now, if it was a set of vertices that were not on an open edge, then it would be a little bit different. So for example, let's go back to modify, flatten, and this time we're going to select a plane parallel, we're going to use control points, and we're going to select all the vertices in the middle here. We need to select a plane, and in this case I'm going to select my XY plane. And when we go back and forth between control points and surface points, you can see that it does have a mild effect. It's not nearly as drastic as the open edge, but in this case, you can see that we're relatively close to that plane and we're able to take all these vertices, whether they're on the surface or if they're on the control frame and push them directly to that plane. Now it is also important to note that we're taking a full ring of vertices. In this case, what we're doing is we're actually taking ones that it doesn't really matter if they lie on the surface or on the control. Either of them are gonna be okay, but you'll notice that in the box display mode that these vertices are actually slightly different. When we go to the control frame, then it's going to be averaging those out. When we go to the smooth display, it's going to average out those as well. So hopefully you can see that there is a slight difference and it really is geometry dependent. 
But this is a great way for us to take several different methodologies or several different approaches to creating geometry. We've already looked at the method of using vertices and scaling them to get them flat, but sometimes you can use the flatten tool in order to get them pretty close. So again, we'll do fit for this and you can see that if we just simply work our way around, it's going to begin averaging their position. Now we can see through the model that that doesn't look very good in this case. It's just strictly a result of the geometry that we're dealing with. But note that we can do this with control points or surface points. And at the top, it actually has more of a drastic effect surface points than it does with control points. So keep in mind that it's a good idea to play around with these. In most cases, I do prefer to work in the box display mode and work with the control in this aspect, but it doesn't always work out. You need to be flexible and you need to be able to go back and forth between both. Before we're done with this model, let's go ahead and let's select the top faces and let's hit delete here. And let's go ahead and just select this entire upper ring, go to modify, and let's rotate it and simply push it around. Then I'm going to select the entire thing and pull it over. Now the reason I want to do this is because I want to show the origin and I'm actually going to rotate this whole thing and what I want to do is I want to take this end and I want to make it fit or flattened to a parallel plane. So now that we've sort of moved this around let's try to use flatten one more time. We're going to do parallel to a selected plane. We're going to select this XZ plane and then we're going to select our vertices. So again, we need a number of selections in order to make this work. But now you can see from the right that we were able to grab all of those and make them parallel to that selected plane. This is a great way for us to create a design. Uh, for example, if we were creating some sort of uh, intake tract or some sort of path where we would want to manipulate those, we can very easily get that flattened and get the geometry right. Now, it is important that we do look at this in box display mode. I always say that, but Sometimes the curvature in the smooth display is not going to be very easily understood. You can see here that we've got this sort of lip. So it's a good idea to just go back and forth between smooth display and box display to see if you can figure out any potential problems that you might have. In this case, this looks okay in both box display and smooth display, but really it's this bottom ring that's likely causing us problems. We need to make some additional adjustments take this ring and adjust it as well, and then take a look at it in smooth display. Now, if you can't get around an issue like this, sometimes the best option is to go in and potentially slice it. So select that entire upper edge. I'm gonna insert an edge, and then I'll take this entire face and just delete it. This will give me that clean edge. Again, it's another starting point and a little bit of an extra step but sometimes the geometry will just fight you and it's a good idea to just sort of start over or add another loop or edge whenever you need to. All right, so I think that's about it for this tool. It can come in pretty handy. The most applicable time that I seem to use it is if I'm trying to actually flatten out the face of a design. Um, so for example, if we had a box and we simply just draw a quick box here. And we decided to crease the bottom edge. So if we work around this and we crease the entire bottom edge, then having a completely flat bottom can be pretty helpful. So if for some reason the bottom wasn't flattened, then we could go in and we can use the modify flatten tool. In this case, I'm gonna do a fit I'm going to view this from the right hand side and I'll just box select all of those vertices. And now we're back to a completely flat bottom. So again, there are different ways in which we can use this tool. This is probably the most common use for me, but it is helpful to be able to apply it to different models. This bottom face here, you can see that it is not a true plane. We can't create a 2D sketch on it. Sometimes you will get a conversion where it is a planar face, but for the most point, uh, that is not going to be a true plane. So that's something that you will need to be aware of. You can't just come back and create a sketch on it. But if you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.